Okay, I'm just going to talk over the credits there. Um, we've got a few people who are on these flights um, that we just showed that edit of with us tonight, including Kevin Fong. I'm afraid to say the French editor on that film cut out the best bit of his joke. Um, and uh, his, his joke was, um, it's, always, it's always good to fly, but perhaps not again um, this afternoon. And um, <laughs> so I always want to re-edit that, that, that particular thing. I'm Rob Lafrané, I'm the curator of the Arts Catalyst. And um, Claudia, I just wondered if you could plug in my first slide. I'm just going to quickly introduce um, the evening with a little bit of history. And I don't want to go on too long, because I know Kevin Fong, who's our first speaker who you saw in that film there has to go quite soon. Um, but I just want to talk a little bit about um, how um, the Arts Catalyst got into this uh, microgravity business. Um, in the middle of the 90s, sort of all I um, really knew about microgravity was, um, well, we're going to show a little slide here, um, but in, in the middle of the, the 90s I was actually doing some research on art and um, unexplained phenomenon, phenomena. And um, a chap um, in Switzerland actually told me about a, a, a French artist, Kitsu Dubois, this was in about 1995, who had become the first artist uh, to, to uh, actually get into this uh, thing where the, the planes where they trained for zero gravity. So um, when I um, joined the Arts Catalyst, um, I was sort of in, very interested in, um, in, in trying to find her. And um, we got involved in quite a, a long um, um, odyssey to try and, um, I'm sorry, other way around, to try and um, um, sort out a flight with the European Space Agency. Okay. Yeah. So, um, are we there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, th th this is really all I really knew about um, zero gravity before. Um, but, but I like to show. I show this part of a, a little, um, a little um, presentation I do about levitation. People's ideas about levitation. So, just before we hear from the people who've been in zero gravity. I just want you to feel gravity for yourselves. The opposite of this slide, I'd like you to just feel gravity pushing you down into your chair and just feel a bit about gravity. Then you're going to see presentations by everybody. We've all experienced real zero gravity as opposed to this notion of zero gravity. So if I just, uh, I want to show you a little slide here which will be. Um, so this is um, Kitsu de Bois. Hmm? Hmm? This is a wine glass. Yeah, uh, Kitsu de Bois, who, um, so you see this, this, this very interesting, quite sort of uh, degraded shot was shown now on the Caravel. Um, this is our first sort of idea of what it would be really like to fly in a falling aircraft. And at that does a parabola. I think Nicola's going to explain the parabola in a minute. But um, I was in Slovenia and um, trying to sort of think of a way to get this woman back into zero gravity when Marco Pelican, who's going to join us later by Skype tonight, um, said, Rob, you have to come to Moscow in 10 days' time. You will fly in zero gravity. You have to get visa. You have to get medical. You have to be there. And I'm like, no. No, no, this is the sort of thing, I, you know, I know about artists doing it, but not planning to do it myself. And, but unfortunately, ten days later, after losing the facts uh, with my medical, uh, Nicola, of course, uh, Tris got in. Uh, found it. What? Found the facts. Found the facts with my found medical. She said, you're crazy not to experience this. Um, so I found myself in 1999 um, with, with a sort of... Uh, Next slide. Um, there's only one more slide. <laughs> ah, that's it. So this is the only known slide of me in zero gravity. <laughs> Up there somewhere. This is in 1999. It's actually the shot of the first curator ever in zero gravity. Um, this is Dragon Shivadino. Um, that's his second flight. He'd done a, 
uh, a flight sponsored by a cigarette company. But as you can see, um, someone mem memorably later um, talked about me trying to be the first person trying to crawl in zero gravity. <laughs> and uh, the very interesting thing about this was that I was on this flight, nobody spoke English, everyone was either Russian or Slovenian, and my trainers were Yuri Gizhenko and Sergei Kukalyov, who were like total space heroes and cosmonauts, so I really didn't know what I was doing there. However, when I got back to London, after experiencing extreme disorientation and surviving uh, 12 parabolas of the, in this flight, uh, Nicola and I got together and realised it was indeed possible to take uh, a mixture of artists and scientists in, to zero gravity. So I want to introduce Nicola to talk a little bit about her um, experience with zero gravity, which is slightly different to mine. Um. Yeah, well, I had no idea that Rob was really scared about this. I thought it was an amazing opportunity, and why on earth wasn't he grabbing it and rushing off to Russia with such enthusiasm? Um, but we've been having a lot of problems getting Kitsu Dubois uh, and the, uh, the Imperial College Biodynamics Group that she was working with through the whole European Space Agency system and getting uh, our experiments accepted onto the ESA flights. And um, what ESA were interested in, in doing on their flights were scientific experiments. So they were very interested in the scientific protocols that we had. Uh, we were looking at control, uh, the control of movement of the body in varying states of gravity. And they were very interested in the neuroscience experiments that we proposed. But they weren't so interested in the, uh, in the more speculative postural control experiments or the earlier stage ones. And they weren't interested in the art at that time. So when Rob came back from this flight, I went, well, this is fantastic, let's just go to Russia, we'll take Kitsu, we'll take the scientists, let's, uh, let's go off to Russia. So we did, and it's a very, it's a very big plane, the Aleutian. This is um, Kitsu on, her, uh, on the Russian flight. I think you saw a little bit of it uh, in the gravitational film. Uh, and we thought, well, we'll take a couple of other artists and... Uh, and scientists as well with us and and we all went and the one thing that really struck me i mean i think i just thought uh, the, the whole sensation of zero gravity was really fantastic um and i'll tell you a little bit about how the parabolic flights work and how they how they produce the uh, the weightlessness but i fell in love with um russia i've never been to russia before and, uh, and i was completely fascinated by the Russian space program and how little actually we know about it, or how little of that is in our imaginaries of space and our understanding of the history of space because uh, in the West we tend to get brought up with stories of Apollo and, uh, and NASA have an extraordinary PR machine and we just don't really take on board Russia and I think um, you know Mikhail Ricklin who was a philosopher we took up on our second flight said so much when he said, you know, underlying, in Russia, underlying the Cold War motivation um, for space supremacy was this real artistic, philosophical, almost religious ideas about the cosmos and going to the cosmos. So I think as um, Mike Stubbs, who came on our first flight with us, said, if you'd taken me to Swindon and thrown me around in zero gravity, it wouldn't have been a profound experience. It would have been like bungee jumping or something. But you took me to Russia. And Russia is where, uh, you know, where the science in long duration space flight and the impact on the body is really taking place. So that was just hugely um, important to me. And uh, so we went back in 2001, we took more artists, we took scientists, we took curators, we took philosophers. And then we went back again in 2003 um, uh, and did a whole campaign of flights. Uh, and we've probably commissioned about 22 artist projects, maybe, have come out of it. We took about 50 or 60 people um, into zero gravity. Uh, and some of the works that came out of it include Kitsu Dubois' uh, Trajectoire Fluide, Mike Stubbs' is Zero, Marcelli Antonez Rocca's um, Daedalus Project, uh, Yuri Liederman's Kefir Grains are going onto the flight. Uh, we have projects by Vadim Fishkin, the Otolith group did their first ever film, uh, came out of our trip to Russia, which was both about the experience of zero gravity, but also accessing the archives, the Russian archives. Uh, we have Morag Whiteman. We had so many different artists, Andrew Cotting's film 2G, which we should have added to the program tonight. Um, 
And we also managed finally to get onto the ESA flights. So we did our we did our ESA flights, we did the neuroscience experiments, and, and we took some of the Imperial College scientists to um, to Russia as well to do the postural control. So it was a really extraordinary experience at that time. We kind of stopped after 2004 because, well, it, it, it wasn't. It was becoming very easy for our artists to access at zero gravity, and we felt well. You know, we've kind of set something going now. We'll just let everyone go, uh, and I think there have been a number of flights since we stopped going, where artists um, have been uh, doing various projects. Hagen from one of those flights to tonight. And we do. In fact, yeah. she organised her flight. So, uh, so the doors are open. And okay, I was going to tell you how parabolic flights work for people who don't know. It's a very simple process. The space station uh, where you see astronauts living in space is, is really just in free fall around the Earth. So it's the, it's the physics of free fall. It's that, so a parabolic flight, they could only do them when the engines really got powerful enough. So you get a plane, the Russians take the Aleutian, which is a really massive kind of cargo plane, which is used in Africa a lot for, for ferrying mercenaries around. And you take it up to a very clear area of airspace. You don't want to meet anyone on the way. And you, uh, you take it up to a f about 30,000 feet. You put it into a steep climb, and you go up very fast. So the reaction forces on your body are doubled. So you literally are twice your weight. Uh, and you feel like it in every bit of your body. And after about 30 seconds of that, you get to the, towards the top of the shape called a parabola. And the pilot then takes most of the power off. And the physics then is as though I picked you up and threw you across the room. You're just like a thrown ball. You fall all over the top of the parabola. And for 30 seconds, there are no reaction forces. So you float around in the air, you're completely weightless. And then after 30 seconds comes the downside. The pilot pulls out of the, of the dive and you hit the floor, and you hit the floor really hard because it goes from zero G to double G very, very quickly. Uh, so if you're not at the bottom of the plane, most of the smaller planes, this doesn't matter, but in an illusion, it's high. If you're, you know, if you're up there, it's like falling twice that height. You can really damage yourself. So there are a lot of the, a lot of the zero G instructors who are trained paratroopers are there to make sure everyone is at the bottom of the plane when you, when you come out of that. So it looks like this beautiful floating sensation. And what Rob is describing is that it, is, it really doesn't feel like that. It's really quite brutal. And there are two ways of coping uh, with it badly. I think one is uh, some people get very nauseous. And probably about a third of the people that we've taken up do get quite sick. Uh, and the other is to become very disorientated. And that could be quite dangerous as well because you don't then for some reason, you don't know where up, where down is. Um, some of the, the proprioceptors in your body that tell you where gravity is and where down is, um, they're not working anymore. And in some cases, the poor Radio 4 journalist we took with us, for example, had both. She both got nauseous and she got completely disorientated. You heard her shrieking, ah, I'm on the ceiling! Shortly after that, she passed out and we had to come down after, um, I think, about 12 parabolas. We were going to be doing a lot more than that. Uh, but for others of us, uh, it's a very, it's a very 